Welcome! In today's video we're going to focus on some character designs. We'll be covering the whole process of this lineup of characters and all the tools that I use along the way. From the generation mask to the style reference tool and more tips and tricks you can implement in your workflows. So let's begin! So, I'm going to show you a couple of recordings of characters that I made and all the tools that I use in the process. Right now I'm working on a project which is pretty early on under development, so I don't have much of a clear path yet of what I want to follow. So I started by sketching some concepts and then throwing them into Alpaca for further developing them and exploring different ideas. I started with this character, which is like a lady knight. I'm currently re-watching Game of Thrones, so I got, uh, I, I got really inspired by this character called Rian of Tarth which is like this awesome tall blonde lady with a black armor and a golden sword. And I love that idea, so I use it as a big inspiration for this character. So color-wise, I had a pretty clear idea of what I wanted to start with, so I include them on my sketch and started generating from there. Usually my first goal is to just start generating till I find a more solid base to continue developing my design on top. So I started to play around a bit with the sliders. Since my input is pretty rough, I know I want all the details that I can, so I bump up the change slider to the max. And I give it just a bit of freedom since I want my generations to be pretty close to the sketch I have. I feel like if I wanted something completely new or more random, I would definitely increase the freedom. Once I get the solid base that I was looking for, I started to play around with all the features that I have and in this case the first one is the generation mask. Basically this tool lets you select a specific area and your generations will come up only in that section. So this is useful when I want to do specific changes without changing the whole design and composition of my image. So in this case I started selecting the chest plate basically since I felt it was a bit too curvy for my taste and I give it a prompt for a male armor and once I had a result that I liked, I saved it, I erased the unwanted edges so it blends better with the rest of the design and there I continue making more changes. I ended trying different hairstyles, I added an emblem on the chest, maybe from the clan she's from. I even elongated the sword as you can see and make it match the black aesthetic of the design. And here you can go as much as you like, I feel. So, when I finished playing around with the generation mask and got a design I was happy to continue with, I started using another feature which is playing around with different descriptive prompts. I tend to use this to change the appearance of a design rather than changing the design as a whole. So just by adding simple words to the original prompt I've been using, I can get like different versions. So, so far the prompt I've been using was black armor, dark, golden sword, blonde hair, to the render and animated style. So what I did was I added different words to see what could I get. If changed, I recommend adding them at the beginning. So for example, I added golden and got this really cool result. And the same way I tested a silver version, a bronze one, an aquamarine one, even a white one as you can see. And I think that's a really cool, quick way of uh, testing different variations of your design. And you can also try different models in the top section if you're looking for more of a particular style. And once I had a couple of variations that I was happy with and felt like they were presentable, basically I jumped to the second character. So let's go to see that one. So for this character, I started the same way. The only difference is that I uploaded a blank sketch since I didn't have an idea of what the color palette should be. So I let the tool help me come up with ideas in that matter. I started looking for a solid base at first, the same way I did for the Lady Knight, and I ended up with this one, which felt really good, but I thought it was a bit simple in terms of shapes. So what I wanted to see is if I could get like different designs. So what I did is bump up the freedom slider for getting different results. I saved all the options that I liked along the way, so I later on would decide which one I liked the most. And I ended up liking this one, which had like a bigger hoodie and a smaller cloak. And I think that looked better than my original design. So when I was happy with that new option, what I did was I started playing around with another feature called the Style Reference Tool. This one was a big one for this character. Basically this tool allows you to upload any image you want, and all the results you get are influenced by the texture and colors of that image. And with the slider you can even define how much influence you want. So in this case I used the tool with a lower influence, since I noticed that when it's low it usually picks up only the colors from your reference, 
and that changes the whole color palette of your input. This was really useful since, like I mentioned in the beginning, for this character I didn't have a color palette defined yet. So I continued testing multiple textures and I ended up loving this ice one. I love the colors, this combination of light blue with white and brown. Even stuff like the little patterns on the cloak felt really cool for me. And I ended up liking this result so much, in fact, that I went back to my Lady Knight character and used the same ice texture for getting like a winter version of that character too. So since I was really liking that icy winter theme, for the third character I went with the same vibe. So, for this one I started sketching inside Alpaca. The only two things that I knew was that I wanted some sort of a small blue creature and it to be made out of ice. Basically, I ended up repeating the same process I show you with the other characters. Maybe a small comment is that when I used the same ice texture in the style reference tool, I actually did a version with the reference strength set very high, which is this one, since I wanted to see if I could stretch that ice vibe that I was going for. And what I did was I grabbed the parts of that result and combined it with the base design. And that's pretty much it with the characters. I think it's worth giving like a small mention to the style reference tool since it ended up kind of defining the whole theme of the project in a way since I originally hadn't thought of that ice winter aesthetic but once I saw it, it kind of ended up inspiring the whole story for the project I kind of imagined that maybe the kid is like a, a prince that secretly escapes his palace and the Lady Knight is his royal personal bodyguard and his companion that all protect him in a way and yeah, that's pretty much it with the whole lineup of characters. Pretty happy with the results. I feel I could easily continue designing and testing different variations, but they felt pretty good enough for me to present them. I really hope you enjoy this and find it useful. And yeah, I hope you get to try it. You can sign up for free on the website and I hope you get to create some really cool stuff. Thank you for watching.